Hi, my name is Kent. In this video, we'll be showing you how to do the preventative maintenance on a MIA 250 mobile robot. We'll be following this checklist that you can find on the MIA support portal. Follow this link and you'll be up and running. To inspect the outside of the robot, you start by looking at the covers, uh, look at the mounting, ensure all the screws are in place, ensure that the uh, covers are not actually touching the wheels in any places, and also ensure that they do not have any cracks where uh, plastic or cords could get caught. Uh, if you need to clean them, use a damp cloth. Do never use compressed air. Uh, that could actually move the, the debris and the dirt inside the robot instead. You also need to check the top cover. Uh, if you have a top module, ensure that it's actually firmly uh, mounted on top of the robot. In this case, we just have a simple plate, metal plate. Just ensure that it's within the limits of the robot, nothing overhanging, and that it's actually securely fastened with the four bolts. To inspect the optic covers of the laser scanners, you need to find yourself a torch uh, or maybe just use a mobile phone like I'm going to do here. I'll just switch on the torch and I will look for cracks and dirt on the uh, optic covers uh, as you see here. Now in this case I see quite a lot of dirt that I need to remove and when you do that, when you remove dirt, you need to use one of these uh, microfiber cloth uh, that you probably got with the robot or uh, you can buy them uh, anywhere where you can buy glasses and um, spectacles. Um, you just uh, wipe off any dirt that you can see on here. Make sure you get all the way to the back because any dirt will be seen as an obstacle by the robot uh, when it's driving. And once you have all the dirt removed, use the torch again to look for any uh, scratches or cracks in the cover. In this case, I don't see any, but if you do, just a small crack uh, or a small scratch, make sure you replace that uh, cover so that the robot can navigate freely without seeing any obstacles that are really not there. To inspect the 3D cameras at the front of the robot, you find yourself a torch or just as, as I do here, a mobile phone. You shine the light onto the 3D cameras and you check for dirt, you check for scratches, you check for cracks, and just ensure that they actually are fitted properly uh, behind the cover here. Now, in this case, I do have some dirt on the um, cameras and I can use the same cloth as I would use for the uh, optic covers for the laser scanners and just wipe them off. Also, if you have uh, a pair of glasses, you may have one of these microfiber cloths, you can use that as well. Uh, never use any uh, paper-based material like tissues uh, that could scratch the front of those uh, cameras anyway. And just ensure they are clean uh, and then uh, they will not actually uh, provoke the robot to stop for any obstacles that are not there. To inspect the broom and the charging pads, you first need to ensure that the robot is switched off and the battery is disconnected. Then you put on some gloves and you just feel underneath the robot at the front that you can actually push the charging pads up, all four of them. And then you just uh, wipe the brush at the front of the broom to ensure that that is clean from debris as well. To inspect the drive wheels, you first need to remove the side covers for both sides. Uh, that will give you full access to the uh, drive wheels and the boogies. And you need to uh, just look at the drive wheel to see if it's worn, whether you have some debris embedded into the, to the wheel. And also, if, if it looks a bit worn, uh, you can measure the diameter, you can find the numbers in the manual. Um, if they need replacing, again, we do have a guide for that. To inspect the caster wheels, you need to remove the covers, and then I suggest you just raise up the end of the robot so that you can move the uh, caster wheels freely. The first thing you need to do is just to check the bearings that they actually allow the wheel to turn uh, freely. 
And then you need to inspect the caster wheel itself. Uh, you just uh, look for debris in the wheel and just to ensure that they are not excessively worn. You also want to ensure that nothing is embedded uh, between the uh, mounting and the wheel itself. If you need to replace uh, a caster wheel, you should replace all four at the same time. To inspect the top module fastening, you need to look in the documentation for your specific top module. You need to gain access to these four bolts uh, inside the top module. And once you have that access, you need to just ensure that they are properly fastened. To inspect the battery disconnection switch, you need to remove the rear cover first. Then you look at the lever and you just ensure that it can actually go up and down, as you see here, to connect the battery or disconnect. Also, when it's at the top position, you need to turn this knob to ensure that the lever is locked in place, as you see here. Also, that you can then release it and pull it down afterwards. This is the Mark I robot on the Mark II, the 250. We actually have a, a pull lever that will lock and unlock the uh, battery disconnection switch. I'll just leave it in the connected state. To inspect the manual brake release switch, you first need to take off the rear cover. Then you just try to move the robot and you'll see that it's actually uh, in, in brake. You release the brake by turning the knob here at the end, turn it to the right, and now you can actually move the robot freely just by pushing it. Now, if you, like me, have elevated the robot, uh, you need to be very careful you don't push it off, otherwise you can uh, just push it as far as you want. You then activate the brake again by turning the uh, switch to the left, and once you have done that, you just need to press the resume button and the robot will uh, go into the paused state. To inspect the status lights and the signal lights of the robot, you do a visual inspection all around the four sides of the robot. You check that the status lights are actually uh, lighting up on both the sides, at the front and at the rear. And when you put the robot into protective stops, all these signal lights should illuminate. To inspect the safety PLC, you log on to the robot and you open the interface in the browser. You then go to monitoring, hardware health, safety system, communication, and just check that you have all okay messages in there. To inspect the speaker, you need to make the robot play a sound by logging onto the robot, opening the user interface, and then go to setup and sound. You pick a sound, and you just make it play to ensure that it is uh, clear and loud. To inspect the emergency stop button, you simply need to press the button and ensure that the robot goes into emergency stop. Press the button, the robot is in emergency stop. You turn the knob, the robot is now out of emergency stop, but you need to press the resume button either in the corner or on the emergency stop box, and the robot will go into a pause state. The first step of the brake test is to create a dashboard with joysticks that has customized speeds that correlates to the protective fields as described in the user guide. Load the robot up with the maximum payload you will be traveling with at any one time. If at a later date you need to carry a higher payload, you need to perform a new brake test. Use each of the joysticks you just created to drive the robot towards an object. Now measure the distance between the object and the robot. 